welcome back to the channel. And after using the Google Pixel 7a for an entire week, I can't stop thinking about how good this phone is. Now, I know that there are phones that you can buy used for around the same price with, you know, a much better processor or maybe even better cameras at that. But if you're in a market for something new, small, and you love all things Google, like their cameras, the software, and all the Pixel exclusive features, then the Pixel 7a is the best Android phone that you can buy for $500. And the fact that it's using the same processor as the more expensive siblings, the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, I can't actually recommend this phone enough. Now, since I've had the phone for about a week, I kind of have an idea of how this holds up to the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. And as someone who reviews a ton of flagship phones on this channel, it was definitely hard going from, you know, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, which is my primary Android phone, to Google's Pixel 7a. The Xiaomi 13 Ultra has incredible cameras and top tier specs, but that phone is also around $1,000, while the Pixel 7a costs half that at just $500. Now, there's obviously a ton of difference between these two phones, but we're not here to compare those two. So let me give you guys a quick refresher on the Pixel 7a's specs real quick. So the Pixel 7a is of course rocking the same Google Tensor G2 chip as the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. And from what I understand, it's not underclocked or anything like that. It's not running with less cores. Uh, it's the same exact chip that they use on their flagship phones. Uh, but this phone also packs eight gigs of RAM, just like the Pixel 7, which is awesome. And it only comes with 128 gigs of storage, which again, should be plenty for most people. Now, the back of the phone is made out of plastic, which if you didn't tell me that, uh, I would have easily guessed that this phone features a glass back. But nope, it's plastic, and this beautiful Google Store exclusive coral color looks amazing in person. It is a little vibrant, but it's got that nice shade of red and orange to it, which looks awesome. But you guys all know me by now. You know whenever I get a new Pixel device, I always slap a D-brand skin on it or use their grip case. So they sent me their Teenage Mutant Ninja Pixel skins, and it just looks so good. And as a fan of four turtle dudes eating pizza and fighting crime, this makes the Pixel 7a look really unique, but also very fun. Now, if you guys want to check out dbrand and their super cool skins, go to dbrand.com slash heymarkel and pick one up for yourself. And huge shout out to dbrand for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now up front, you're getting a 6.1 inch full HD plus display with a 90 Hertz refresh rate, which is now on par with the Pixel 7. So typically with the A series of phones from Google, they'll usually take out some premium features to cut back on pricing and keep those features for their flagship devices. Well, 90 Hertz or fast refresh rate displays in this day and age of smartphones are usually kept for more higher end devices, at least here in the US. But in terms of its display quality, the colors are vibrant, the blacks are black thanks to that OLED display, and while viewing angles could be better and the screen could be a lot brighter, I'm just asking way too much of a phone that's $500. So one of the best things about the Pixel 7a is the fact that it feels like I'm using a more expensive phone. Since it is a Pixel device, it has pretty much all the Pixel exclusive features like the now playing screen, which shows what songs are playing on the lock screen, quick tap, which allows you to double tap the back of your phone for a custom action. And then there's the other software features like call screen, voice message transcriptions, and of course, astrophotography mode inside the stock camera app. But it is that same vanilla Android experience that I've really gotten used to with the more expensive Pixel devices. Now, throughout the week that I've had the Pixel 7a, I didn't really notice any stutters or lag when using the phone for social or playing casual games or watching videos on it. Now, I have had the phone heat up every once in a while, especially if I'm playing a game for an hour or so, or if I'm out on a hot day and extensively using the phone. But that also happens with phones that cost twice as much and I'll be honest performance will take a hit and it will throttle the phone's performance so that the phone doesn't overheat but besides that though when I'm using the phone just for social or watching videos it's a really enjoyable experience and I think you'll enjoy it too now talking a little bit about the battery it's a little bit subjective here just because how I use my phone can be a lot different from you know how you use your phone but in the first week that I've had the pixel 7a I was able to average around five and a half to six and a half hours of screen on time which is definitely plenty of battery for an everyday consumer but yeah for me I didn't have issues with the phone dying on me at the end of the day I was able to go from you know 7 a.m. to about 10 30 p.m. and then charge the phone overnight and the 7a can charge up to 18 watts which again is totally fine for this price point you can expect about 80% charge 
in about an hour or so with a fast charger. And this also now features wireless charging, but at a much slower rate at 7.5 watts, which again is fine for overnight charging by your bedside. Now let's talk cameras. So this time around, Google updated the 7a's camera to something new, a much bigger sensor that's now a 64 megapixel camera with an f1.89 aperture and an updated 13 megapixel ultra wide camera with an f2.2 aperture that's actually wider than the ultra wide on the normal Pixel 7. In outdoors and great lighting, the Pixel 7a, just like the Pixel 7, can take incredible looking photos. It's sharp, it's contrasty, and has that signature Pixel look to it that we all know and love. The photos are not overprocessed, nor is it too saturated, which I really like. But besides that though, even in low light, the Pixel 7a can handle nighttime photography no problem, especially with night sight. There's little to no noise and everything just looks good out of the camera. But when it comes to videos, it's really nothing special or anything to rave about. The dynamic range is good, but not great. The colors are pretty lifelike and contrasty, but I did notice that even in normal everyday conditions, I found that the darker parts of the video looked a little bit too noisy, which doesn't look good. And in low light, it's obviously more noticeable. Besides that though, the only real gripe I have here with the 7a is that if you want to record 4K60, the only option you have here is using the main wide lens and not the ultra wide or front-facing cameras. The Pixel 7 and 7 Pro can record 4K60 using all cameras, so I'm not really sure why you're not able to record 4K60 using the other lenses, but I'm hoping that Google can push out an update that'll fix that as well, because not having 4K60 for all cameras is a little bit weird, especially that this is running the same Tensor G2 chip. And so to wrap it all up for you guys, like I said in the beginning of this video, you're probably going to compare this to older devices that you can pick up, use, or refurbish, and are probably around the same price, if not cheaper. But the Pixel 7a is brand new, and at this price point, it's not bad at all. Now, I would recommend the Pixel 6a from last year, which is still a really good phone for what you can pick it up for now, which I believe is around $300, but you are going to lose out on that 90 hertz refresh rate, and you're going to go back to the first gen Tensor chip, and you use older camera sensors and also lose out on wireless charging. But if you've got a little bit more cash than $350, then you're most likely looking at this phone or the Pixel 7, which nowadays you can find on sale for around the same price as the 7a. And I'll make another video on this comparing the 7a to the Pixel 7. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on that video. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching and yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.